Welcome to Move Your Mind. My name is Nick Brax, and this is a podcast where we have real conversations with real people and give real advice. You can achieve anything in life provided you're willing to do what it takes, to back yourself, to never give up, to believe in yourself, to take opportunities when they come, and to work hard above all else. Sam Bashiri is an award-winning tech entrepreneur, property developer, mentor, and motivational speaker. And I spoke to him today about his life story, about the lessons he learned, and how he went from nothing to in a 15-year period, building broadband solutions from a $1,000 router to an award-winning specialist provider turning over close to $30 million per year. Sam's very upfront, honest, likable, and he says things how they are. This was a really great chat, and I think anyone listening will take something out of it. Thanks again for supporting Move Your Mind. If you'd like to learn more, you can join the Move Your Mind community at moveyourmind.me, and you can buy the Move Your Mind book at nickbrax.com slash book. Sam, great to meet you, mate. Thank you for making the time to come on the podcast. Thank you for having me, and it's lovely to meet you as well for the first time. Exactly, exactly. And you're you're from Melbourne, are you, from what I, what I looked up? Yeah, I'm based in Melbourne, Australia, that's right. Oh well, there you go. So I'm I'm from Melbourne and in New York, but I'm back back pretty soon actually. So maybe we can um we can do an in person catch up next time. Um, but you know it's like and, and I say that all the time with the podcast. The best part about doing this podcast is I get to sort of have these conversations, you know, with people that you, you're not always going to get to connect with or you know and 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 sit down, you know, half an hour, an hour, and actually have a conversation like this. It's the best part about it sure is and it's it's good because you know it's interesting this day and age you know from my age we didn't have social media instagram and all that back when i was growing up so it's interesting how we can connect with all sorts of different people uh just on social media and we can bring each other you know we can bring people together and have those conversations it's crazy it really is crazy like i run this entire podcast through instagram so it's like the yeah, and, and, you know, like there's a lot of negatives and we this gets talked about on this podcast as well. Every time at the end of the show, I ask sort of a bunch of questions, one of them being, you know, what do you think is the biggest, one of the biggest burdens on mental health? And most people say social media and, you know, so many negatives, but there's also some positives about it. And, you know, it's how we how we connected to do this as that's well. Like, I've, and that's yeah. how I get every guest and, you know, half of my business that I'm doing, it's, you know, just connecting with people through social media and it's made the world a very small place. So it it's a different world, isn't it? It's like crazy. Stories, because it's all so busy. I think if we found, if we were to connect in a traditional way, it would take so much more effort and time. And yeah. I just think it would be possible to meet as many people as we do today. And I think it's just about we all have something in common and through our content and through social media, that's what brings us together. Or we see something that we like about someone's content and it kind of resonates. It's like, well, I understand that. And you start to connect uh, with that person because you have something in common along the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I totally agree. And it, it, it's great for that. It's, that's the thing. It's because, like you're saying, at the core, everyone, you know, we're all – got pretty similar core things that we deal with in life. And we, we think that everyone's different or, you know, if you're going through your own thing, you think other people don't have the same experiences, but at the core, we all, you know, in different ways go through very similar things. So it's sure good do. for that. Yeah. Um, so before we get into it, are you able to give a bit of a, a background on yourself? You know, a bit sure. just basically if you can give us your story and, and how you got to, you know, doing what you're doing now. Yeah, sure. Um, so I was born in Iran, in Tehran, in Iran. Um, at the age of 10, I uh, migrated to Australia with my uh, mum and sister. Um, we basically came here for a better life. Uh, we wanted to have the freedom to be able to, you know, just live a normal life without any limits in terms of being able to do what you want, talk about what you want to talk about. Just all those basic things that I guess we take for granted every day. Um, so we migrated here. Uh, we came here illegally. Uh, as a part of coming here illegally, we uh, I did probably a year and a half to two years in detention from the age of 10 to 12, um, which looking back now kind of was daunting um, as a child growing, you know, going through that. Um, then got out, couldn't speak a word of English, didn't know anyone here, really 
what helped us was the community around the church community, um, the Persian community, total strangers, a lot of, lot of strangers that were so kind to us. You know, I still remember um, getting our first black and white TV, which had one of those dial things, you know, yeah. um, just like an absolute box um, <laughs> and getting that from the church. And I think that was one of my highlights of my childhood. I was so happy to have that TV. And I remember connecting the antenna, the old school antennas you put on top of the TV and connecting to one of the channels. And um, a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of good memories through hard times that I still remember as a child. Um, but what I, what I remember is that how the generosity and kindness of other people can help you to get on with your life, even through the hardest period of your time. Um, so yeah, through that, I went after we got out. I went through uh, primary school. I think I did one year of primary school. Then I went to high school. Then I went to university. Um, I there's a lot of pressure as a child going to through uni, especially coming from the Persian community. You either had to be a doctor or engineer. If you weren't, you were an absolute failure. I remember back then, um, the Asian newspaper uh, uh, printed out all the results when uh, your VCE results, which is what we did. Back then, and um, the whole community would go and buy the paper, all right? And they look for your name and to see if you got into medicine or engineering. So when you're looking back, it's it's a lot of pressure on a young person to perform. Um, and perform at something that maybe you have no interest in, really, because everyone mm-hmm. has different interests. So I didn't get into uh, I didn't get engineering or medicine. I, um, I got into a uh, computing uh, course, information technology. I did that for a number of years. But I, I really had no direction. I, I don't know why. I've never really sat down and thought about it. But I really, I had an interest in computers, but it wasn't something that I, I was very passionate about. University was something that I was passionate about. I found the lectures to be quite dry. I didn't have the attention span to sit there for over an hour. Um, I usually started to switch off after 30 minutes. Um, so it wasn't really for me. I, I, I had a moment. I remember, I think it was in my early 20s when I um, sat in the driveway of, my mum and dad's house, and I I just started crying. I just looked in the rear view mirror of the car, and I just started crying because um, I was lost. I had no direction. I didn't want to become a failure because, you know, obviously all the sacrifices that my parents made for us to come here hmm. and all the sacrifices that they kept making every day, going to work, trying to provide for us, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I reversed the car out. I went to Centrelink, which is a place where you look for jobs. This is back in the dial-up days where internet was quite new. I applied for a job in an internet company, a call center. Um, it's called ESA back then. EISA was a new internet company. I remember going for a job interview at 459 Collins Street, level 14, walked in. Back then, there's a lot of young kids in skateboard gear running around. It was just the start of internet. Anyways, I applied for a job, seven fifty an hour, got the job, put the headset on, started learning in these uh, cubicles where there was three or four other, you know, colleagues. I didn't know a lot about, you know, the internet. I just knew the basics. So I asked a lot of questions, a lot of questions. I was the first one to come, last one to leave. And I used to get, I used to make probably five to ten dollars extra every day, or maybe a little bit more, by logging people that were coming in late. They used to call me and log log them into the system so that they don't get into trouble for being late. So I did that for a number of years, and then I thought, well, great, I've learned a lot, but it's a bit of depressing because everyone that calls, they're always upset and angry and irate because they can't connect to the internet. So I should look for a different kind of uh, line of work. I love sales. I love meeting people. I love networking. I moved to sales. I went actually for a job interview, interview and um, the first job interview I did with, uh, it was a family business. The wife, she interviewed me and she thought my language skills went up to scratch and I wouldn't be able to deal with CEOs and um, high net worth people, uh, companies. Um, so she said, no, I asked for a second interview. I got interviewed again and uh, Matthew, the husband interviewed me and, um, and he said, no, you should be all right. And he gave me the truth feedback, which I really appreciated. Um, mm. He said, look, Sally thought maybe you went up to scratch. But I think, you know, you've got the oomph that you need to give it a good crack. Uh, so he gave me a shot. I did that for a number of years. And then while I was doing that, there was a lot of um, mergers and acquisitions happening through the telecommunications industry. So um, 
I got to experience all that secondhand in terms of seeing people sell their companies, their share prices going up, then the share prices going to nothing and losing everything. I got to see people coming to new environments in their mid 40s, late 40s, and then getting a tap on the shoulder and letting go because, mm. uh, because of the acquisitions that were happening. So I got to experience a lot and it really helped me to focus on where I wanted to be in my 30s and 40s. Hmm. Um, so I decided that the only way that I was going to really be able to achieve what I wanted to achieve was to go on my own. Um, so I um, I was driving one day, I thought broadband solutions kind of made sense. I went and looked up the domain, which is the domain name broadbandsolutions.com.au. Um I took out probably a thousand dollars or so on my credit card to help set it up and get things going. And um, there was bulletin boards back then. We're going really back now, where you could advertise your services for free. So I went on that bulletin board. It used to be called Broadband Choice, and I um, advertised my services. Um, and I started selling internet. You know, I um selling to internet to anybody that wanted internet, small businesses, residential, all sorts. Did that for a number of years. It was really, really hard work. And every day I thought about, am I doing the right thing? Should I just go and get a job? And should I just, you know, do a nine to five job and not worry about staying up every night and changing Mm. my website and optimizing this and that and learning about Google AdWords, learning about Facebook, all these things that I had to learn myself because I didn't have the funds to hire people. Anyhow, um, Look, I'm just looking at Steve Jobs. When one of the things that Steve Jobs said, um, I've got one of his paintings, portraits that I'm looking at. He said that you can always connect the dots when you look back. So when I look back now, I realize everything that happened happened for a reason. Yeah. Failures and successes. So anyhow, I um, I enjoyed playing golf or trying to play golf. I'm not a really good player, but um, <laughs> I was playing golf one day at, in Albert Park in Melbourne. I got a phone call from a hotel. So um, they looked us up in that bulletin board and they wanted an internet connection for a conference that they had coming up in two days' time. So I stopped playing. I went and I um, organized a satellite dish for them to put on the roof and use for this conference. They used it for the conference. They absolutely loved it. A couple of weeks later, I got a phone call from another hotel uh, asking for the same solution. So I provided the same solution for them. And then at the end of the conference, I asked them, you know, why, why, why not keep this internet link? Why not keep mm-hmm. the user for conferences? And they said, look, now we deal with um, some major companies that provide our movie system, our internet, they bundle it together. Um, thanks, but no thanks. So I said, well, who are they? Why don't you give me their details and maybe I can speak to them and we can partner together. So the gentleman passed on their details to me and I'm, um, and I remember at the same time, uh, my nephew was going through uh, leukemia treatment. He was three years old. He was going through treatment in hospital, in, uh, in Monash Kids Hospital. And um, I went to, one of the days, I went to buy him a DVD player, those portable DVD players, so he can watch those DVDs uh, while he's going through his treatment. And I remember pulling up in the airport, the DFO outlet there in front of JB Hi-Fi and thought to myself, what have I got to lose? Why don't I just call and introduce myself to this hmm. company? The worst thing that they're going to do is hang up on me and tell me to go away. So I picked up the phone. I rang up. I spoke to a gentleman called Nick. I spoke to him. He's the operations major there. They put me through to him. I spoke to him and he said, look, we're actually looking at going through a tender process soon and looking at some new vendors. Why don't you come up to Sydney and see me? Um, I said, okay, great. Come up to Sydney and see you. I went to Sydney. I met Nick. Got along really well with him. And he said, look, I like you. You're young. You're an enthusiast. Like, you know, you've got a lot of passion. I like this, and I'll um, I'll give you a shot when the tender process comes up. A um, couple of months later, the tender process came up. I never, I've never done a tender in my life. All right, don't know how to write a tender. Wouldn't know how to start one. So I reached out to one of my old bosses from my old companies, and I asked him if he could help me to do this tender. And he said, "Yeah, I'll help you. It'll cost you fifteen hundred dollars a day. Fifteen hundred dollars a day was a lot of money to me. We had, we had yeah. hardly anything." So I remember going and getting three, four different credit cards and taking a cash advance on those credit cards and I'm, I'm paying um, my old boss to do this tender. We did the tender, submitted the tender a few months later. And uh, and at this stage, we're probably making five, ten thousand $10,000 a month in revenue, if that. So we went from um, that 
And if we got this tender over probably 12 months' time, we would have gone up to, I don't know, three, four hundred thousand dollars revenue. So massive, life changing experience it would have been for us. Yeah. So I remember I, we did the tender, uh, handed it in. Um, and a few months later, I got a phone call saying, Look, you've been successful in the tender. I'm going to get our head of technology to come and check out your operations in Melbourne. And if he's good, then we're good to go. My operation was two desks in an office, um, probably 10, 15 square meter office. Yeah. <laughs> There's no operation. Um, I, under- I understood the industry. By this stage, I was in the industry probably five, six years, if not longer. I absolutely, I was the best at what I did. We could provide the solution hands down and better than anybody else. But we just didn't have the, you know, the fancy office or anything like that. So I remember coming home that night and, feeling absolutely shattered, having spent fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars on this tender and above all, not wanting to lose face. Right? Thinking, you know, if he comes and sees this operation, two desks, it's just, there's no way, you know. So I thought in the morning I'll give him a call and just say, look, um, something's come up. Unfortunately, I can't make it. I remember seven o'clock in the morning, I got a phone call from the gentleman that was coming to see our operation, said, look, I'm way too busy. I have no time to come and see it. Why don't you come to my office in queue and we'll have a chat there. Perfect. Went there, met him, and everything from that moment changed. And everybody through that story over the last 18 years ended up working with me wow. and working for me. Um, and, you know, it's it's interesting, Nick, you know, like I said, there's defining moments. You know, I could have, and I always say this, I could have continued to play golf and not went back to the office and provided that solution. I could have not answered that phone call. I could have not made that phone call at DFO that day. There's two or three things that, you know, a lot of people talk about being smart, having a high IQ. I think it's all just about seeing opportunity and seizing that opportunity and giving it a go. You know, it's about showing up. It's about giving it a go, trying your best. And once you do that, and if I'm a massive believer of also karma, I think if, you know, your parents, your grandparents, or you, you've done good things, good deeds along the way, and you've made a lot of sacrifices along the way, or your other generations in your family have, good things happen, you know. Um, and I think there's a reason for everything. And, um, yeah, that's really the story and how we got here. And now I've been doing this for 17 years. We are one of the biggest, if not the biggest, in Australia when it comes to providing um internet and uh, phone systems within the hospitality sector. Um, so we look after all the big brands like Marriott, Hyatt, Hilton. Um, and yeah, and it's still growing. I'm enjoying what I do. I love what I do. I'm still passionate about it, as passionate as I was back 17, 18 years ago. Um, and it's been a phenomenal journey, you know. Um, I could have never in my wildest dream learned this at university or went through this if I went through a nine-to-five job. I've learned so much and um, I've met so many great people. I've made so many good friends and I've had a lot of challenges, a lot of challenges. You know, I went from a young man who, you know, did lived in the detention centre, then lived in commission houses and really got picked on at school for not having a lot to discovering a lot of money in my early 30s without any guidance and mentorship. So that brought on a lot of challenges for me at that age. Um, Looking back, pretty scary how much, you know, money I spent and all the challenges that I went through in my mental health because I was burning out. Mm. I was just working so hard. I was doing 10, 12, 14-hour days. Yeah, I was just grinding and grinding and never having the mentorship or guidance and not having, you know, not having someone to tell me, you know, you got to have discipline in terms of you have to have balance in life, you know, and just making it about working and making money. I really went through a stage, probably two or three years of my life where when I look back now, it's quite scary. And, um, and, and, you know, I, say this to a lot of young men, it's, 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 if you don't have that guidance and mentorship, because if you come from a very wealthy family, that's been taught, you've been taught that through generation to generation, through generation, right? But if you don't and you discover money, which a lot of young kids are doing these days with the crypto and with mm. all this stuff, and I see that and, um, and you see them making such different mistakes and, um, 
and it's sad to see that, but it's sad because there's, we really don't have a lot of mentors and guidance from all the people that I've been through at top, a young generation. And I'm, I'm a massive believer of that. And, you know, I do my social media and everything because I don't, I'm not an influencer. I make no money from my social media. I make no money from my mentorship. I make no money from it. It's nothing like that at all. For me, it's just about really trying to help as many kids as I can with my, within my own means um, to just keep them in the right track because you can definitely get off track and it could really, bad things could happen to you. Well, mate, first of all, yeah, thank you so much for sharing the story. It's um, incredibly inspiring, like super inspiring. And I love stories like yours where you've literally done it from nothing, you know, from the ground up and worked it out as you go. I think they're the most inspiring stories. And, it, you know, it, it's a good message for everyone to hear as well, that, you know, anyone can do it if you're, but like what you said, it's about not not, not that you have to have any certain, you know, circumstances working for you it's being able to see the opportunities and to jump on them when they happen and you know and that takes self-awareness I think to be able to to do that but um you know it's interesting the other part that you mentioned as well which I guess that's a big part of why you know we're doing this podcast as well and you know mental health in men especially is a huge thing and you know there isn't that guidance of if when they've got the money, what do they do? How do you how do you be a man? How do you transition in all these different parts of life? And when we don't have the guidance, you know, where the hell are we? Who, how how do we know what the hell to do? Like you 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 basically learn. You know, I know for myself, I learned through making so many mistakes and falling flat on my face, doing stupid things, and you know, you look back and um, you just you know you learn through trial and error. But often that doesn't. Some people don't come out the other side of that. You know that transition. Thank you so much for supporting Move Your Mind. We're expanding the offerings of the organization and we're tailoring everything we do to suit you guys and to try and answer to all of your needs and the questions that you send in. The book is available globally. You can find all of the links at nickbrax.com book. And we've just released the Move Your Mind community. We've currently got a men's community group, a women's community group, a general group. We're gonna be lo loading up other groups and you can find all of the links at moveyourmind.me. This group's been created based on the needs of what we've heard and learnt throughout running Move Your Mind. And we have live events, we've got courses, we've got huge amounts of value, the ability to share information, share ideas, work in groups together to, to grow and share your learnings, to learn about different topics. You get email reminders. There's a whole lot of features in there. We're constantly updating it and we're so excited to share it with you. You can find all of the information about it at moveyourmind.me. Spot on, spot on, man. You don't know any better. You don't know any better as a young man, you know, um, being put in the spotlight, getting a lot of accolades and all that from everybody. It, it, it really gets to you because you're just, you're just young, you know. Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to be wanted. Everybody wants that. Everybody wants to feel special, whether we admit to it or not. It's just, you know, especially when you're young and you're looking for, um, you're looking for uh, validation, exactly. especially when you come from nothing. We want to, we just want to be validated. You're looking for validation, and sometimes you're looking for validation from everybody, you know, um, and sometimes from the wrong kind of people. Um, so it's it's really important. And to be honest with you, I think one of the things that really helped me through my life is exercise. I am um, every time I exercise. It really helped me clear my mind. Um, every time I kept very busy, but busy and focused on a number of different things and I got the balance right. So, you know, one of the things I did a lot of was that I used to switch my phone off for an hour every day and I used to just go to, just go for a walk. Hmm. Just go for a walk alone with, without anyone around and really realize how blessed I am to be where I am today because yeah. we forget that because we are constantly grinding and, and, you know, we always think we're not good enough and we have so much to prove to others. And, you know, I always say if you in life, you, all you do, if you don't get your balance in life, right, all you're doing is just going from one room to another room and every room you're going to find someone better looking than you, someone mm -hmm. stronger than you, someone richer than you. So unless you learn to be content and happy with what you have, you're just going to chase that and just going to move different rooms. And before you know it, you're going to, you know, your life's going to pass you by. You know, what did I really achieve? Yes, I created wealth, but what, what does that really mean? So for me, exercising 
really helped me. It still does. Yeah. So you know, it's still when I'm stressed, I, the first thing I do is I go, to, I go and exercise and I work out and it really clears my mind and it really helps me a lot. And I've learned to talk to people. Again, as men, you know, especially young men, they thought that we have to be tough and strong and we shouldn't talk about things. We shouldn't talk about our feelings and emotions. Um, but I think it takes actually a stronger person to be able to speak about your feelings and emotions and you have to have empathy for people. And I think it's very important to own who you are and own your mistakes. There's no, I, I don't believe in that we are bad. I think it's just the circumstances that we've been through. And I think everything comes from your childhood and your childhood experiences. Whether you realise it or not, it affects you a lot. Um, and it's just being able to tap into that and recognise what you've been through. You know, for me to, as a child, to grow up in Iran when we had a war between Iran and Iraq, every night hear the sirens go off and had to run and hide. Hmm. We had bunkers in our buildings. And then from there, coming to a totally foreign co- country, having to be locked up for a number of years, those are, those are traumas without you even realizing it. 100%. Because you just, yeah. you know, well, we don't realize it. We're like, oh, such life. Let's get on with it. Yeah. You know, don't be a weep. Don't, don't complain. Just move on. That's life. Okay. But when you stop and think about, they, they do affect you in life. And having been bullied and picked on at school meant that I never felt good enough. In a way, that's what also you take that as fuel to push you to do well in life. Yeah. Because you have something to prove. You're like, well, I am good enough. I am not going to become a victim because it's so easy to become a victim a lot of the time. Say, oh, well, life is too hard. I don't have this. I don't have that. So what opportunities do I have? And how can I succeed in life? Mm-hmm. Or you take that and you use that as fuel to push you to show to yourself and others that you are good enough and you can make it. But the other side of that is that with that comes a lot of other crap when it comes in in terms of mental health because um, it really messes with you in your head unless you have that guidance and help. And I think it's really important to find someone that you can talk to. And, you know, it doesn't have to be a psychiatrist or a psychologist, even a friend or a mentor. I think it's such a big thing. And, you know, throughout my life, I probably went through, as I got older and as, as the business grew, I probably found three or four mentors that really helped me with my business and where I am today. And, you know, from time to time, you reach the maximum level you can get from that person and then you move on to the next and the next as you grow. Yeah. But I think it's quite important to have that. I think it's so important. And, no, all the points you're making, I think, are so important because it's it's so true. Like, we don't realise, like, when you're a kid, you just sort of, once you get become an adult, you and we've, by that point, suppressed ourselves to the point where, you learn all these coping mechanisms. Like a kid is so emotionally open and, you know, like they they don't have an ego. They're willing to sort of do anything. And then you get, you know, you protect yourself and then you sort of get to a point where you, um, you don't even realize like you've got all these underlying things until you start working on yourself. But it is that I think about what you were saying all the time of like, um, and again, I know for me and so many people, like a lot of things that I went through and these chips I had on my shoulder and self-esteem issues and whatever it was, that was the fuel to drive me to then take extreme action to go on the career that I'm now on. But uh, but then, you know, at some point, you're not going to, like you're saying, you're not going to be happy no matter what happens unless you can also work on yourself because that's such a like there is no end to it it's like what level do you go to where and not where it's enough for you to feel like you're enough um so uh, yeah it's it's so interesting and like i've got a lot of friends that have made a lot of money and you know they've sort of said the same thing where um it's been you know it's made life better in some ways in terms of removing stress and everything but the core things don't go away and I mean, is it, so is that something you've experienced with sort of yep. that path? Yeah, 100%. And I think, you know, uh, I'm 44 years old, so once I hit 40, I really started to slow down in a lot of ways. You know, I put a CEO, CEO on to run my company on a day-to-day basis because I really wanted to take the time out to mm. invest in myself and get to know myself better. 
and also I wanted to take the time out to um, enjoy different things in life, you know, yeah. going on a whole day, taking time out without feeling guilty. You know, I, I, I don't think I've ever slept in. If I ever slept in, I felt guilty, yeah. you know, that I shouldn't, I shouldn't sleep in. If I sleep in past seven o'clock, I'm a bum. <laughs> well, hmm. How could you even do that? It's like, yeah. well, it is okay to sleep in on a weekend. Like, no, nothing's going to happen. Um, and for me, it's been... Yeah. <laughs> I've been <laughs> it's I've so been funny, you know, I'm, I'm just laughing because, like, I do all these versions with myself and yeah. my girlfriend's always, like, saying to me, like, there'll be... And just stupid things where it's, like, yeah. just this need to feel in control because you're so paranoid that if I take my foot off the pedal in one area, something might fall. Like, you just got this feeling of... <laughs> Things yeah, are going to fall apart. It's so it's true. It's yeah. so it's true. I remember one day I, I was driving a different car and I didn't have a phone charger in my car. I remember running to, uh, driving to office works, running in, buying a uh, charger, opening it, throwing the money at the counter and going into the car, just putting the charger and putting it into my phone. I'm like, whoa, what am I doing? The world's not going to stop. That was just <laughs> like, I couldn't believe I actually even did that because I always was, I always thought, I was always on the go. I was yeah. always on the go, nonstop, you know. Um, but, yeah, look, for me, in the last uh, four years, I've realised that there's more to life. And number one is that you really got to get to know yourself. You mentioned that. It's so important to discover yourself. And no one's perfect. You know, you see this social media life there. You see all the nice things people have, all the good things they are doing. But if you actually sit down and talk to a lot of those people, which I have, to many of that, a lot of people, you find that it's a whole different story behind that social media. It's so different. It is actually a filter, not on just appearances, filter on life when you really yep. think about it. And um, and I think it's it's really, really important to get to know yourself. I realize that no one is perfect. Perfect is boring. No yep. one even likes anyone that's too perfect, right? Um, it's about getting to know, yes, this is where I'm good at. This is not what I'm good at. This is where I lack in my life. This is what I need to work on. And yes, it's not going to happen overnight. I'm not going to change overnight. It's going to take a lot of time and effort. And there are going to, there are going to be times that, you know, I might do things that I don't agree with and I might slip up here and there. And that's just part of life, you know. Yeah. And um, as long as you are working towards bettering yourself, for yourself, not for others, not in others' eyes, because no matter how good you are, when you walk into a room 99.9% of the time, people will judge you based on your appearance, based on your looks, based on how you speak, based on your race, based on all sorts of different things. You will get judged whether you like it or not. Um, but they don't pay your bills, mate. They're, they're yeah. not there, you know, they're not there every day with you. They're, they don't know the real you. So you must do it for yourself and not others. And that's something that's been very big for me because I always thought I had something to prove yeah. to everybody, you know. Um, and it took me 40 years to realize that, yeah. that I don't. And I can be myself, my genuine self, and I can own all my flaws. And it's okay. It's because that's how we all are, right? Um, but you got to have... You gotta have, you gotta work on something. And I think as you grow older, you find that it's all about also leaving a legacy of some sort yeah. for your family and for other young people so they can learn from your mistakes, but also learn that you can create success within your own means. And um, and I'm a big believer that success has a different meaning to everyone. To some person, it's a white picket fence and a dog and a family, which is beautiful. To someone, it's a yacht or a fucking Ferrari or whatever it may be. Um, you can be successful with your own means. And as long as you're happy, that is your success. You have done okay. And that's all that matters. My name is Nick Brax and I'm a storyteller who has dedicated my entire adult life to creating positive conversations around mental health. In recent years, discussions around mental health have become less taboo and entered the mainstream vernacular. I've delivered over 1,000 mental health seminars around the globe, including several TED Talks, and I believe we all have a story to tell. In my book, Move Your Mind, I cover my story and stories from people that inspire me, as well as insights from world-leading mental health experts. This book will help you to learn how to recognize mental health issues before they become a problem. 
Use your personal challenges as motivators. Take ownership of your well-being and create new daily habits that increase happiness and reduce stress. It's a really important point because that's when, like what you're talking about. I think it's really dangerous now with social media and everyone comparing themselves. And, you know, the, we live in this like this capitalistic consumeristic world and people are often striving for all these things that they haven't had enough time to work out to learn about themselves, to even work out, Hey, do I actually fucking want this or not? Like they, they might not even want it. So but they're like looking at, you know, but this is what I'm told I should do. So it's fine to, you know, it's fine to want anything like, but it's, you, 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 you should spend the time to try and learn, okay, what, what is it that I really want? Otherwise, you know, you're going to drive yourself into the ground. You're going to be miserable. You're going to burn out. You're going to, you know, you're just not going to be the best version of yourself if you do it. And what it's not sustainable, you'll just, you'll break down. hundred percent. It's all about fulfillment. What truly fulfills you? Yeah. You know, I got to some of the best restaurants I always have, but I can go and have a kebab and I'll pick that kebab any day over any fancy restaurant as long as I'm with the right company, right? And yeah. It's just simple things in life. Yes, it's nice to have a lot of nice things, but those things shouldn't define you. Mm. They should not define you. If you, re- if you need those things to be able to operate and live your life on a daily basis, then it's not right. You have every right to have whatever you want, and that's yeah. great. And, you know, everybody has different interests. Some people like wine. Some people like fishing. Some people like golf. Some people like cars. Everyone has different interests. But at the end of the day, anything materialistic in your life should not define you. You should yeah. be able to operate without, with losing all of those things tomorrow you should still be able to operate and have a good time and have those friends and family around you that you had. Yes. And I think also the key factor as you get all these, that the smaller your circle is, the better, you know, yep. um, so true. And I'm a massive believer of that. I, I used to be that kid that used to have friends everywhere. No matter where I went, I run into people and all that. But now I probably have, you know, three or four friends um, that I love with all my heart. Um, they're just the most beautiful people for me personally. And um, and that's more than enough for me because with business, with family, with everything that you got going on, you really don't have a lot of time. And I think you got to appreciate and respect your time and you should respect yourself and yeah. your time. Because if you don't, then people won't either. And I yeah. think, you know, we get the word humble a lot, you know, and I think people don't understand it. Mean being humble is how you treat others. It's not based on what you have or you don't have. It's not based on, you know, what how much time you make for absolute strangers or people that add no benefit to your life. Yeah. And you know, if you're told that that's selfish and we shouldn't be like that, and it's not true, mate. You know, you come first. If you can't look after yourself, how are you going to help others? Exactly. You really can't. You really can't help others. If you're not in the right mindset, if you're not in the right financial position, if you're not in the right you know, place you need to be in life, you cannot help others. And if you want to help others, help yourself first, get your shit together, get, set yourself up, and then use that as a tool to help and guide others or donate to the right foundations or anything that's close to your heart then you're in a position to do that. So it's very, very important sometimes in life to put yourself first. I couldn't you know? agree more. And, you know, like you said, it's not selfish. It's actually more selfish not to put yourself first because exactly like you said, if you don't put yourself first, you're going to become a bad version of yourself. Then you're going to be bad to be around. And like, oh, I love all the points you're making and it's so true. And like anyone, you know, that, says they've you know if you if you've got more like you're saying than sort of four or five super close friends it's almost impossible to have like deep relationships because like something unconditional and i've got the same thing i've now got probably three three or no probably four close friends where it's unconditional to the point you know i'm in new york if it was three in the morning here and I needed to talk to one of them, I can call them, they'll help me if I need it. And I'll do the same for them. But yeah. I couldn't have that with any more people because you can't like, there's only so much time in a day to service relationships, yeah. you know, your partner, work, whatever else you're doing. Like, and if you are trying to do more, you're going to, nothing's going to have meaning. It's going to be all 
sort of fleeting sort of things you're doing. So it's like so true. So, so, awesome. yeah. so true. You're hundred percent right. It won't because you can't. You can only give so much, and as you said, it will have no meaning because it won't have any depth to it. So it's yeah. really when you think about it, it's not possible. It's, in, it's um, impossible. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. it's in, yeah. impossible. Um, I, do you do you feel like? I mean, I think about this um, from what you're talking about. This Jim Carrey said a quote where he was saying, "I wish everyone could become as rich and famous as I've become, because then they would realize it's not the answer." Do you feel like for for you having the success you've had in business, you would have been able to have these realizations that this is not the only answer to being fulfilled and happy. It, did it take actually achieving it to realise that? It took it, uh, it took achieving it and it took also going through all the challenges that I went through in my life to realise that's not the answer because people think that, oh, if you become successful, everything in life is good, everything good, but there's so much other things that come with that that you don't see, right? Um, uh, depression comes in different forms. You know, I... I I believe I went through it. I was never diagnosed or never looked for a diagnosis for it. I never, yeah. like, I never had the depression in terms of not being able to get out of the house or getting up and all that kind of stuff. So I never experienced those things. But I think I am. Um, I felt lonely a lot, a lot of the times. Even though I wasn't, I am. Mm. Um, I was very hard on myself a lot. So I was my biggest critic. Um, I um, I carried a lot of guilt, you know. Um, I don't know why, and I think um, for me that really, really affected me a lot. I think I, um, being successful is great, making money is great, but you also have to have insight into yourself. Without that, you're really blind. And you're just mm -hmm. not living an authentic version of yourself, and. Um, I think it made me realize that it wasn't everything because growing up and, you know, starting a business and all that, it was about that. It was about, yeah. I was taught as a young boy that success is about how much money you have, what mm -hmm. cars you have, what you do, this and that is all about that. But as you do grow up and I think, you know, ages, you get wiser as you get older because you make more mistakes. Right, so yeah. as you get older, you yeah. make more mistakes, so you learn from your mistakes, right? Um, but yeah, no, it's not the answer, it just really opens your eyes. And I think one of the things that's very important is not to get consumed by it. Yeah, I see a lot of people get consumed by it, and I see a lot of people that have created so much wealth and then lose it all because of some bad decisions in their life, and it's heartbreaking. They're not bad people, they're never bad people. You know, they just made the wrong decisions. They've just got caught up with the wrong people. And um, I think one of the things that we really need to do is uh, stop and think a lot more, like a lot of the times. Yeah. Stop and think about the consequences of our actions. Um, and, you know, what does it mean if I do this and this? It could, we never, I think what happens as an entrepreneur, you're always on the go. You don't think about it. And yeah. one or two bad decisions can absolutely destroy your life. And, um, yeah. and I think we need, Again, slow down. Yeah, we need to slow down, and that's one of the things. That's why I used to turn my phone off and go for that walk. And one of the things, you know, I still do is that I go. I obviously I'm in the city, in the city, and I go for a walk around places where I was getting paid seven fifty an hour. I go past the mitre, the pub that I used to sit down and have lunch when I was earning fifteen dollars an hour, and it really grounds me. Yeah. Um, the place that I live in now, one of the reasons why I moved there a year ago was when I look to my right, I see that building, that call center on level 14 that I mentioned. That's where I started my journey. And I would have wow. never, ever in my wildest dream, in my wildest dream, thought I'd be where I am today when I look at down that window. And, you know, but I did it because it really brings me down and you need to slow down. And well, it's just... gratitude. It's giving you gratitude, isn't it? It's like, yeah. It really is, mate. Because, you, you know, as you, as, especially when you're young, you feel you're invincible. You're just going a million miles an hour. Yeah. But it slows you down. I think a lot of the answers are in slowing down and having gratitude and having empathy for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and I think all of those things comes from if you've actually experienced it as well, if you've been through hardship, there's yep. no excuse for bad behavior in terms of, you know, when I say bad behavior, I mean by how you treat others. Yeah. It's, it's, and I think that one of the things that people need to 
also realizes that it's been a 20 year success because it wasn't overnight. Nothing it happened. 20, no. And, and, and that's, people don't see I'm, that. I think that's. It's a 10 year anniversary of Underbrax and we've relaunched with the classic white pair. We've also got new styles coming out super soon. We're donating a dollar from every pair to mental health, currently to one in five. You can find all of this at www.underbrax.com. I think that's a really important point because, you know, obviously you told the story about how if you missed, yeah. you know, if you kept playing golf and didn't be opportunistic yeah. at that time, but that's not the only reason why you got to where you are. There's like a whole 17, 18 years that happened after that of you, you know, grinding and actually building this thing into reality. So I think that's like, I think a lot of people either it's one or the other, it's either working, you know, their ass off, but not in a smart way or being purely just opportunistic, but without wanting to work for it, it's got to be everything. It's got to be sort of, you know, you got to know where your skills are. You got to work hard when you need to, but, but, you know, and, and the other point you were making is so true. And, um, that's what I find hard in business and what I've, I guess, cause I sort of, you know, want to be able to slow down a bit and feel things and connect with people. And a lot of business and a lot of entrepreneurs I meet, it's go, 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 go. And I'll be sitting with a friend. He's like, Hey, let's go grab a coffee. And I'm sitting there and I'm trying to talk to him and he's checking his phone. I'm like saying something, you know, he's like unable to even interpret what I'm saying. And I'm like, Hey, we don't have to catch up. Like, like it's yeah. like we're literally not able to have a conversation because, and that's just so common. So it's like it's hard to find that balance. Yeah, hundred percent right. Everyone's everyone's on their journey and everyone's trying to achieve something right now. Yeah, um, but you've got to slow down. I, honestly, I think it's so important, and you actually make better decisions when you slow down. Yeah, um, because yeah. when you're impulsive and you're doing things on the go, and we learn to do that because we're wired that way. Because we're always doing deals and doing this and that. We're stuck. Like, Slow down. And one of the things that I am, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm about to get into a buy agency where we're going to look after a lot of young AFL football players and manage them. And I'm, and I, 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 I don't know a lot about footy at all. Um, I've probably been to two or three games, but watching them and yeah. seeing them go through all the challenges that they go through with that mentorship and all that. And then, anyways, I spoke to one of the gentlemen that I'm going to go in business with, and he was so excited. You know, he's like, "Oh yeah, great idea. Let's do it." I said, "No, no, mate." I want you to go and sleep on it tonight, tomorrow night, the night after, and come and see me on Monday, and then we'll talk about it then. Because it's, and he was so excited, you know. He's like, "Okay, how do we do it?" I'm like, no, "We're not doing nothing. Slow down." Like, I I want it as bad as you do because I love to be able to be involved in that because I'm yeah, passionate yeah. about the whole mentorship and stuff. But you got to slow down. And he and he messaged me later on saying, "Thanks, mate. I really appreciate you telling me to." Like, I to totally. You. Totally get that. It's just being, yeah. And I, I, I find that hard in so many different areas of my life where it's like that, that impulsive sort of thing where you just, and, and when you, when you do be impulsive, you get so overwhelmed and you just, you know, you can't, like you said, it's when you make mistakes because you're not, our brain can only take in so much information at a time. So it's like, it's a tricky thing to try and find that balance, but yeah, I think really good point. And yeah. So, um, mate, I, I've loved everything you've talked about on here. I guess, like, um, to finish up, we we have five closing questions. Um, th these can be sort of quick answers, whatever comes to mind. Yeah. We we finish every episode with these. Um, first one is, what's your best childhood memory that comes to mind? Sitting on my dad's lap and starting the car for him every morning before he went to work. Um, so I used I to run that. down. I love that. I used to run down. I used to, and then as I got a little bit older, he allowed me to push the clutch in and put the first gear on. Um, yeah, I'll never forget that. It was very, very special to me as a child. That's so good. Yeah, I love those kind of memories. Yeah, exactly. That's great. Um, what do you think is the biggest burden on mental health in society at the moment? I think it, the biggest burden is um, people's interpretation of you and what people think of you, and and the. Please, whoever is listening to this podcast, if you want to take something away from this table, I just want to want to know that you're special. You are special because you are you and you are different. And not you shouldn't be like everybody else. Otherwise, you're not special. Yeah. So just be yourself and don't let, don't get FOMO, don't fear of missing out on things. Don't worry about what's happening on social. Take things from social and use it to your benefit, not the other way around. And just... Be yourself and you have nothing to prove to anybody in life. Just live your life to the best 
you can and just just don't worry about other people's opinion and just do you that's it i think that's literally the best advice you can give because there is no freaking like what the hell does perfect actually mean there's no such thing like you can it's it's not achievable what what perfect is is exactly what you said it's being yourself and just doing what makes you happy not worrying about what other people think yeah i think it's like really really good advice Uh, what's your personal definition of happiness be content and not wanting more and more all the time so be happy with what you have and say you know what i've done okay life is good i cannot buy a jet but I'll be able to rent it one if I wanted to. I cannot buy this <laughs> house, but I can rent it. And yeah. It's just, you got to learn to be content, mate. Otherwise, it's yeah. never going to be enough. And for me, it took me 40 years to realize that, and I'm happy to admit that. But I am the happiest I have ever been in my life because I've learned that it's okay. Life is good. I don't have to, I don't have, to have hundreds of millions of dollars in my bank account to be happy. I am happy, and I'm... And, that's true happiness, mate, when you realize yeah. it's enough. Otherwise, you're always chasing and you're never going to be happy. Yeah, you realize that it's enough. Like what you said earlier, whether even if someone stripped you of everything, you realize, you know what, at the core, yeah. it's like, it's still what I can uh, I can do. I'm all okay. the yeah, I'm all right. I'm yeah, fine. I'm yeah. I can still go for a walk in the park. I can still run. I can still have my family around me. Life we, is good. All the things that actually have deep meaning, we can do no matter what. <laughs> that's the. I think that's like a, such an important thing to remember. Um, uh, and yeah, the world is the world set up to make us forget that, but we need to remind each other of it. Well, uh, so two more here. Um, what are you most afraid of? Oh, good question. Failure. I am, it's, um, I'm going to be honest about it. I'm going to admit to it because, you know, they say, oh, you shouldn't be afraid of failure because, uh, you know, that's how you learn and that's how you grow. I think it's the stage that you're responsible for so many people and I'm not Mm -hmm. scared of failure for myself because, as I said, I can lose everything and I'll be okay. Um, I don't want to let other people that rely on me down. And that's what keeps me up sometimes um, throughout the night because I have so many responsibilities for others. Yeah. Um, but that's at the same time, that's what keeps me going, mate. That's what makes me get up at 5 a.m. That's what makes me get up and do what I need to do to be able to support the people that I need to support because they have their dreams that need to come through. Yeah. Right? They are on their journey. And I... I have a responsibility within my own means to make their dreams come true within my own means. I'll, I'll probably play a very small, tiny part in it, but I have a responsibility to do that. And I want to see that through for a lot of people that are that work for me, that work with me, that are my family, um, and a lot of, lot of young men and women on uh, social media that follow me because I have so much love for them. And I want to, I don't want to, I want to be able to give back to them and be able to help them to achieve their goals and dreams. Yeah, I love that answer. That's great. Um, so final one, what are you most proud of? Oof, I don't know. I find I find, the, I find that answer very difficult. I don't know. I think um, the one thing that I'm proud of is my family. I am... Um, I have a very beautiful family and my kids, I have amazing, I have two beautiful daughters and um, every time I come home, they run to me and hug me and they're so happy to see me and to be able to create that with my wife, that is something that I'm so proud of and probably that is the biggest achievement of my life. That's the biggest thing I've ever achieved in my life. Um, there's no monetary value to it. It's pure. It's beautiful. And um, and I never had a childhood, so I get to see my childhood through them. And it's a lot of fun. Um, so that is my proudest, the proudest thing, my family and my kids. I'm very, very blessed to have them. Um, without them, I wouldn't be the man I am today. I wouldn't have anything without my family. They have supported me through my hard times, through the good times, but they were there when I had nothing. My wife was there when I didn't have a cent to my name. You know, yeah. we, we created everything together. There was no hidden agenda. There was nothing, you know. 
and how she puts up with me still, I don't know. Later. <laughs> so that alone, you know, I don't know how she puts up with me, but um, I am very blessed and proud of my family and my kids and nothing could ever replace that in my life. Well, it's the most important thing. And I love that story as well, that, you know, you were with your wife from the very beginning. It's pretty amazing, you know, like sort of to go through that journey together and still be together. So, yeah, um, thank you, mate, for making the time to come on here and loved everything you've talked about. And I've I've learned so much listening to you and I think our guests will get a huge amount out of it. So just appreciate you being so open and, you know, everything you're doing, I think it's amazing. And the fact that you're now on this, you know, next journey and helping other people and everything. And I think it's so important and um, you're definitely making an impact, you know, in the world and, and helping people. Thank you, Nick. And thank you for having me on your show. It's lovely to meet you. And I look forward to meeting you in person once you're down under. I appreciate it, mate. And final thing, where can people go if they want to find out more about you? Where should we? I'll put uh, it in the show right. notes. Yeah, just look on my social media, just Sam Bashiri on my Instagram. Um, they can jump on and um, just drop me a DM and I'll get back to you and we'll go from there. Perfect. That'll be in the show notes. And yeah, thank you again, mate. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. Have a lovely Thanks, day. Mate. Thanks to Sam Bashiri for joining me today for Move Your Mind. And just another reminder that if you want to join the Move Your Mind community, you can go to moveyourmind.me and you can buy the Move Your Mind book at nickbrax.com book.